Hello, in this video I'd like to raise 18 points uh, concerning Popper's logic of scientific discovery. Basically, uh, these points or these 18 theses are um, a condensation of uh, some of the most important arguments in this book uh, aimed at humanities students. Um, uh, the basis, the reason for this is that this is a massive text, often very difficult to get into, particularly for humanities students. Nonetheless, it's such a crucial text in 20th century philosophy of science. Um, while, while this is aimed at humanities students um, and liberal arts students, it was actually um, devised as a result of my experience teaching science and mathematics students. Um, so in that sense, it also speaks to, to science and, and mathematics students as, as well. Um, and I think it's, uh, uh, particularly for, for undergraduates, it's a highly, uh, it, it aims to be a highly uh, useful uh, uh, extra material for, for studying Popper's work. Um, and it aims to give the reader something extra to look out for. Um, when approaching Popper's work. So, uh, okay, so let, let me get into it. Uh, the, the first point is that um, Popper's project was a normative project aiming to provi provide a description of how science um, ought to be done, uh, aimed not so much at uh, at sciences, but those pretenders to science. Um, it is also descriptive in that its normative account is derived from what Popper believed uh, uh, was the uh, characteristic work of great scientists such as Einstein. So uh, he, he modelled his normative project on what he believes actual scientists were doing. Point number two, uh, the logic underpinning discovery is not fully knowable um, and contains an irrational element. Point number three, uh, Popper's position uh, is one in which lies between dogmatic certitude and relativism. Um, this is the position of uncertain truth. Uh, Truth as a necessary or regulative ideal uh, has crucial implications for social, social and cultural life. Um, don't give up on the search for truth, even if this requires counterfactual hope. Point number four, emphasis upon human fallibilism combined with the idea of individual and social improvement. Uh, so fallibilism as a secularized rendition of the theological notion of the fall. Okay, point number five, uh, falsificationism, the idea that we can cr uh, create a criterion for the marking between science and non-science or pseudoscience. Uh, that being our capacity and willingness to stipulate uh, the findings which through testing if they were to arise, would mean having to throw out or revise our theory. Point number six, the idea of science not as an empirical enterprise, but as a theoretical empirical enterprise with, with em emphasis upon the theoretical nature of science. Um, uh, point number seven, the idea that facts don't speak for themselves. Uh, universals embedded in every description of, their universals embedded in every description of facts. So, uh, there's no such thing as raw, da raw data. Um, we are theorizing all the time. Point number eight, the doctrine of the problem of repetition. That is, uh, no repetitions are ever a hundred percent identical and that repetition is essential in determining uh, what is a, re a, a 
that interpretation is essential in determining what is a repetition, as events, results and data can be both recurrent or, or repetitious and different uh, at the same time uh, in one or one or more element. So one more element might might be repeated, but the and might be identical in that way. But there there may be other ways in in in, in which um, the repetition differs, um, and, and and this needs to be posited theoretically beforehand. Um, and point number nine: uh, data uh, does not make something scientific. Uh, neither ultimately does testing. Rather. It's one's critical attitude towards one's tests that characterizes um, science. Point number 10, knowledge grows negatively. That is through learning from our mistakes, not so much in growing knowledge, but in growing our awareness of the extent of our ignorance. We are all rendered equal in relation uh, uh, to the infinite nature of our ignorance. Science is about cultivating an awareness of our, fi uh, of, of our infinite ignorance from which we can stand in awe and wonder of the world around us. Point number 11. Uh, speculative metaphysics is crucial to science. Speculation projects future trajectories. Uh, the speculative atomism of the ancient Greeks provided the conceptual tools for creating modern atomic theory. Point number 12, we cannot get rid of metaphysics and understood as speculation, um, nor should we, as it would mean abandoning the primary conditions for innovation. Point number 13, Science is not to be posited against meaningless nonsense, met, such as metaphysics, um, as construed by the logical positivists. Rather, science aims to enlarge our meaningful engagement with the world, and making a, uh, uh, and making a demarcation within the domain of the meaningful between scientific and non-scientific yet understanding the non-scientific as nonetheless invaluable, um, containing invaluable creations of the human mind. Uh, point number 14, an irrational element or intellectual love underpins all discovery. Learning is what we call discovery in an individual uh, non-scientific context. And uh, and this is uh, uh, for Popper understood in an evolutionary epistemological uh, uh, context. Context. Um, point number fifteen. Owing to the unknown logic of discovery. The products of human creative work have a measure of autonomy from the creator. This is a moderate Platonism. Uh, there are heights of greatness um, and unknown consequences of our creative products that the creator, him or herself, could never fa fathom. A characteristic of great examples of creativity is that the creator is themselves uh, shocked uh, by their, their own creativity and is often left in a state of disbelief, disbelief that such work came from their own hand and their own mind. That sense of, I did not create this, um, uh, to, uh, to quote Handel. Uh, uh, point number 16. Uh, just as a reasonable attitude for humans is to, to uh, view the reduction of harm or suffering as more important um, than the promotion of pleasure, uh, as suffering is, is weightier than pleasure, so too does a falsification uh, weigh or cost more than a verification. 
One falsification can be enough to throw out a theory. However, a verification of a theory can never constitute proof, but at best establish laws as reasonable given the evidence. Point number 17. Induction exemplifies, uh, no, sorry, induction justifies scientific laws as probable, not as certain proof. And point number 18. Uh, fa uh, fallibilism implies that disappointed expectations are the norm for exploration. Uh, knowledge is something to be struggled for, including self-knowledge, and doesn't come easily. So these are my 18 theses, or 18 points. Uh, I don't expect that you to nail them to the doors of your philosophy department, um, but having them on hand when reading Popper's Logic of the Scientific Discovery would help to give you a sense of what to look out for. They are, the I think, the major currents of his life's thought, and he develops these points in, in, uh, to a great extent in his later books and lectures. But you can see often that the arguments for these and, and, and the, the initial uh, articulations are found in Logic of Scientific Discovery. Um, so uh, that's it for this video and thank you. Feel free to email or send or write a comment. Um, yep, bye.